what is up everybody we are back with another episode of weights and weed and today i have a special guest we got a powerlifting legend he set the all-time bench press world record um the bench monster ryan Canelli. thank you for having me here man i yeah. appreciate it man thank uh you. it's super dope man thank you for coming down i Welcome. really appreciate it and i got to shout out daniel for making this happen man yeah. he uh he set this up so let's uh let's go back man let's go back into uh the first sport you ever played so I, I heard that was soccer you did soccer yeah growing up uh, i guess my parents put me, wanted to get me in a sport obviously yeah. and uh, that sport was soccer and i excelled at that very well i became yeah. very good at it killed it and um uh that lasted until seventh grade and then i was like i want to play football yeah um so i wasn't a big kid though like genetically ungifted at seventh grade like yeah, I, I remember I tried out and I went out and they they knocked me down in practice and it felt like I got hit by a car. And you're like, like, I'm, I hard, I <laughs> you're like, I'm cool. I, I, I'm, I'm, I barely got off the ground, dude. Yeah. And I got up and I'm like, oh, I, I quit showing yeah. up. Like, I don't want to do this shit. That's and then crazy. Um, I was like, um, God, but I don't want to play track or soccer. That's yeah. not a manly sport. You're like, I'm cool. And that continued into high school. You know, freshman in high school, and I'm you know I'm five three one thirty two. You know, oh, like just shit. a nerd. Yeah. And, I'm, and once again, you know, tryouts for basketball, football, you know, man, I just, I couldn't make it. And there was, yeah. there was gifted um, high school kids in my I, school, yeah. six footers, six oh, four. Oh, yeah, big boys. Yeah, so I was like, do I want to go run track or do I want to be on soccer? No, soccer, no. I was like, I got to get to the gym. I got to yeah. get big. And that's kind of where it started, you know. We had, we okay. had PE class and, you know, freshman year or junior year. Yeah, and, weight room. In and, the weight room, yeah. Oh, and they had okay. record boards in there at the time. and. Of course, so that's I, like, what I like the bench press. You know? yeah, I'm a yeah, professional the, wrestling yeah, fan. Yeah. And Hulk Hogan with the 24 inch guns. Yeah. Everybody you know? back then had guns, man. Everybody, yeah. Triple H, Stone Cold, yep. Ultimate Warrior, those guys were, they were all yoked. And I remember looking up there, and, and for some reason I just liked the bench. It yeah. was just like, what? I don't know why it was. I think the bench is the. That was a good squat. Yeah. I could squat two plates like in uh, freshman Money. year, which was 225, which yeah. is pretty good. Yeah. But uh, bench press, you know, I remember we had uh, my sophomore year we, in, in, I guess they call it PE, whatever it is. We went, had the weight training part of it, and I went in there. And I always tell this story because we always ask ath- athletes or guests that are on my show, how strong were you in high school? Yeah. Sophomore year, we went in. I remember I bench pressed 135 for one rep. And it was Struggle. everything to get one rep. And wow, then there was this yeah. other kid who got up right next to me. And he was in my class, and he yeah. did 10 reps with it. And you're like, wait oh, a minute. The yeah, sales, like, wait a minute. So I realized I had work to do, and yeah. um, I kind of, like, that's kind of what all started. Sparked it. Sparked it. Okay. Yeah. So in the midst of all, so I know it was, like, around the time you were doing soccer, you got that motorcycle had hit you, right? Yeah, I was hit by a motorcycle um, that was uh, my, when I was in first grade, so that would have been, like, 1981. Oh, so wait. Okay, so before even sixth yeah. grade. Yeah, uh, cr- summertime, I was crossing the road with my friends, and I, and I saw the motorcycle come around the corner and i looked and that's all i remember is that? And i was in a coma for uh, for two weeks wow and they didn't think i was going to make it out of it I actually yeah. cracked my uh skull a six inch crack from the crown the top of it to the bottom of my neck and i was Damn. fucked up and i i didn't know if i was going to make all it bad. and then what's yeah. really weird is i made it out of that and they told my mom and dad that if i made it past um 18 or 21 i'd live yeah. a long and healthy life so how did that how did that affect your mindset kind of growing up like with sports or just even like uh relationships because you're like growing up like i don't know if i'll make it till eight you know what i mean like yeah, they're telling yeah, you that yeah. well they didn't tell me that until oh um, okay i was in high school oh so they waited a while waited, to tell waited, you waited. that yeah i never heard it until i was in high school because my, my mom said it to me and i'm like what like because I, I kept having to go in for head exams um for, for most of my life until uh, my high school year then i quit having and my mom said like we sat down and had the yeah. story and i was like you guys never told me if i yeah, you left that one it. out of the yeah. equation yeah <laughs> like, I, I think what it did because both of my parents were genetically big people mom okay. dad were you know 200 pounds big boned and i was i don't my i didn't really bloom like and i really think that head injury uh, stunted my growth yeah because there's no i can't when i went to high school i was this narrow-shouldered kid yeah. this tall and you just boom and it was like senior year and then i then I blew. Yeah, it came back. I got from, out of high school. Yeah, it came back. So I was a late just, bloomer, and that really that effed up a lot of things for me because I never had a chance to play football. Yeah. Because later in life, I, I had a chance to walk on the uh, Seattle Seahawks training camp. Oh, shit. I knew the string coach. And he well, only offered me that's and, but crazy. I had to tell him I had no yeah. experience. You're like, I don't so know. I, yeah. I, I couldn't walk on, but Damn. I mean, everything that's, had a that's, reason. Yeah, that's some crazy shit. Yeah. So I tried. I tried to find some uh, numbers on, on your dad because I know they said your dad was a powerlifter. Yeah. 
So was that early when you were kind of touching the weights, like a, a motivation, driving force to like, I want to beat those numbers? I want to beat his numbers, absolutely. Yeah. We had a universal, I think that's what you call it. It's one of those uh, weightlifting apparatuses where you can bench on it, do leg extensions, okay. and pull downs. It was yeah. in our living room. And in third grade, um, I, had, I was a soccer player, so I had big legs. Yeah. And I would have my friends come over, and I would load all the plates on the extension, and I'd have I them sit on it. Throw it was up. like showing yeah. off. But yeah. uh, no, he had a trophy on the mantle. It was a, a guy like deadlifting, and it said 375 bench. And I looked at that trophy, and I asked my dad, he goes, oh, yeah, 375 bench. So you know I want to beat that. Yeah, you're like, that's what I'm yeah. going for. Yeah, so, it, you know, it took all the way until 1996. And, um, and it was a wrap. Uh, out of high school for four years, and uh -huh. uh, I, was, I did a little um, in-house meet at the gym I trained at, and I did a three, oh, I did a 390. But I had a bench shirt on. Now, he okay. didn't have a bench shirt. Okay. So okay. I was like, I did I beat him? Yeah. I really didn't beat him. I yeah. have to do this raw. Yeah. So I uh, didn't really have to do a meet to prove that. I did it on uh, video. Just, just uh, I think it. a couple months after that, yeah, because I was repping 405 for like, like five. Like nothing. So I just yeah. fucking did, I, I, I didn't even have um, the video was funny because back then it was the ones you put the VHS tape in oh, on your drool. shoulder. Yeah, yeah. We had the one whole. of those. <laughs> okay. So I brought it to the the. the court club where I trained at and, and we shot it and I just paused with it and put it up and I go that's for you dad yeah I don't know Smoked where that tape's it. at yeah you're like but I it's there it. yeah just to say I did it that's funny but shit. I, yeah, I surpassed him but he yeah. also deadlifted too and he pulled okay. 500 pounds oh, okay and, uh, but he just never um um put uh, a lot of effort into it like I did I yeah. had a passion for it I yeah that was number one in the world yeah and that's yeah. what's that's what I set my goals on not the not the strongest guy in my gym not the strongest guy in the state. I want to be the best. Not the nation. Yeah, the I like that. that yeah. That's where I, I wanted to say I'm number one. Yeah, that's and that, hard. That's kind of what I, I just I just put my uh, heart and passion into. Yeah, it and followed that's it. dope. Yeah, no, it was. I had the same kind of experience chasing basketball because this guy would take me. There was a school kind of close nearby our house, and I was like, I was young. I was like third, fourth grade, and he would take me there. We played one on one, and he was swatting my shit. He was not letting me get no points, and so I remember like, all right. When I get bigger, I'm gonna beat him. When I get, I'm gonna get better. I'm gonna get better. I'm gonna get better. Sure enough, I started whipping his ass, and then it was, it was history. But I kind of had that same kind of like. So you put in the work and came yeah, back. Yeah, so I was up. like, yeah, so. They got a similar arm wrestling story too. It's just, okay. These are these are good values that people can take away from this. I mean, if you put your mind to it, you know, and you put 110 percent in what you want, you're gonna get it. Yeah, you'll get um, the results. The arm wrestling thing, real quick, and of course, yeah, I'm gonna get off topic. No, nah, no, nah, let's hear. It. I, I used hear to work it. in a restaurant as a prep cook, and there was a server that would come back there on our cutting table yeah. and we and uh he would Start. jackhammer all of oh, yeah us. over Cocky the top yeah. <laughs> he got me once in a night and I, uh. I i wanted to try him one more time and yeah. i lost so uh, i went to the okay. gym and i started doing hammer curls i started doing working uh, on the grips. yeah so I started yeah taking the, uh, the cable on the floor and doing and these doing the, yeah well, about i'd say about two months later i cleaned his clock and it also turned into like yeah. a little hustle that i had my uncle yeah. and i would go to spokane pool halls I was no 198 shit. with a cut-off flannel shirt. Didn't look yeah. like much. I had only yeah. 15 and a half inch arms, That's but I had crazy. like 17 inch forearms. Yeah, so you and just... I had a technique, and we were hustling people. Yeah, pinning bucks. everybody at the yeah. point. <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. True story. Yeah. That's crazy. He would go set it up, and he goes, "I don't think you can take my my nephew right there." Oh. Yeah. Like, I, All right. Yeah, let's I, run I it. A, I had a technique too, you know. I, um, I guess it's no big deal to tell it, but you yeah, know, when you go to arm wrestle somebody, first thing I do is I had grip strength. Yeah. So when I grab their hand, I would let them know I'm there. Okay. And, like, then, yeah, and yeah. then the first thing you know, when you go, what they're going to try to do is it's this way. Uh -huh. So what I do is a hammer curl. I hold so you them. Pull it I back. pull in. Yeah, like, so I lock it in like this, okay. and then I look to watch them breathe. As their face gets yeah. red, and then when they, when they when they start to take a breath, that's when I take them down. Yeah. Kick and that shit into high gear. Bit, yeah. Then I, then I pull in again. And so the start, whole time I'm just locked in pulling. Just staying right here. With I'm it. not even pushing. Yeah. Yeah. And that worked for a lot. Yeah. You know, when you're in a bar and people are drunk, they're yeah. just going to go gangster mode. Yeah. Right? Trying to just and rip they it. They don't know about technique. Yeah. So. But so off topic story there. It's no, like, that's a good story. I like that. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't know that. There is a. So there's some you I'd seen in, uh, I think it was the Scott Mendel Mendelson podcast where you talk, you, you kind of touched on it was your natural foundation. So how. How far did you take your natural foundation? It was like a stupid fucking number on your bench. I don't even remember. Oh, before I crossed over? Yeah, to, yeah, um, yeah. Um, supplements and all that? Um, well, I started lifting in um, technically, seriously, like sophomore, junior year in high school. Okay. And, that, and so uh, the first time um, I was offered uh, 
some, um, uh, let's not call them steroids because that's like a fear mongering term. Yeah, people let's get scared of that. Them, shit. Uh, male hormone derivatives. Okay. Synthetic male hormone yeah. derivatives. <laughs> I was handed a, a, a handful of uh, Dianabol pills, and this was my on my birthday in 1998. Okay. So I had, uh, you know, I've been, so 93, I, I had a good five, six years of uh, lifting, of and I had straight, a built a foundation. Yeah. I, I'd gotten up to, um, 556 in a, in a little basic bench shirt. Damn. I was doing 500 for reps of three raw, and I was way, but I was a drunk too, though. Yeah. I was drinking a lot. Oh, okay. On the weekends. Um, so I would, we train all week and Saturday and Sunday, you know, it was like, oh, they didn't get hurt. We just drink yeah. on the weekends. <laughs> but I found out on um, New Year's Eve, uh, shit, we're going back to 1997. Okay. This is before, um, I was still an um, all-natural guy then. Yeah. But um, I did a world's meet, and I benched 517, and I got pissed at New Year's Fuck. Eve. For, I'm not going to go into that story. But I was like, you know what? Yeah. Fuck it. I ain't going to drink anymore. Yeah. Well, I put the drinking away, increased my eating, and two months later, I put on about 18 pounds, and I benched a 556. So I had a 517, 517 or 512 bench in November, 556. And then God three damn. months later, um, uh, as, as, uh, as uh, nature would have it, you know, I was offered some supplements. Yeah. And, and I said, well, you know, I want to try these. I want to see yeah, what they like, do. And yeah. um, I got a taste of them. And that was a whole learning experience, too. Yeah, in itself. Yeah, because, you know, I was like, you know, I heard about them. How do you do them? I don't know. You know yeah. And, and, and the guy that I gave them to me, was a, he had 24-inch arms. Big he was in a dude. wheelchair, and he was a pro uh bodybuilder too oh, shit. And he's okay. like he handed me the pills and i'm like well how do i take them and he's like, i don't know take two in the morning take two at night okay <laughs> and that's it so that i did it. that and i put another 50 pounds on my bench now here's Damn. here's the twist though i put okay. 50 pounds on my bench i'm like wow you know i'm i, I was 550 now i'm 620 yeah oh okay so the next meet i go out um um i'm not gonna have the pills i'm like well yeah. i can still bench 620 yeah well without the supplements you kind of go back yeah, to where you, you take were a hit. Yeah. yeah and i took yeah. a bite back and i that was a that was a real life experience to how strong that medication is and what it can do, where it can take you, but yeah. we can also take you back yeah, down. You, you, take you, a you don't set. stay up, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. You and don't I, take pills and just yeah. stay at a, a, a not yeah, a high you're level. Come off and your body normalizes, and so yep. does your strength and size yep. and water retention. And, and so people, I, people kind of discredit the whole like crossing over. They're like, oh, it's so it's yeah, you did it with. It's like, nah, man. There's a lot of like shit that comes with this whole medication that you don't even realize uh, like you gotta you gotta be smart you gotta know what you're doing you gotta know your body yep you gotta i mean there's so many things but um what's really weird is you know back in my day and i always tell this story when i do interviews um in the 90s you know if you wanted like testosterone or something you know uh, yeah. or, or anab uh, uh, anabolic pills or something you had to have somebody who that had just came from mexico yeah and there was no internet so yeah. god damn today i mean you go to any gym or class or high school gym and they're getting testosterone off the internet like it's yeah. candy bars like, in a yeah. Costco. Anywhere. So, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's it's so readily available now. It's scary. Yeah, it and, is. Um, but and that's the uh, that's how you know life evolves. And what do you do? I mean, yeah, just gotta roll with the fucking. It's just kind of interesting to have to, to where I was from to where we are now, and to see the just the, the availability of that stuff to it's it's kids that crazy. are too young. That's and what's that's crazy. Stuff, we talked about building a foundation. And you can't tell you can't tell a sixteen year old kid, hey, you need to live for seven years before you do this stuff. The yeah. minute somebody bigger than him hands him some pills, he's gonna take them. It's a wrap. Yeah, you're not yeah. gonna tell him. And it was it was crazy. I'd hit the local Y, and there's kids that I you know seen from high school, seventeen. They're like, oh, I've been running this, and yep. I'm like, so, and they're telling me how they're running. And I'm like, bro, you're fucking your body up, and I'm just and that's the sad part. Nothing you could tell him. You nothing, know? You can, nothing you can tell them. You're just like, all right, man. Well, you, you can tell them, hey, you should only take this much, this much. Yep. And then, no, no, so and so said, and it's that, I mean, that uh, psychological addiction thing, you know. Well, if yeah. I'm taking 200 milligrams of this and it's making me this strong, How if much? I take 800 milligrams, it's going to make me this strong. Yeah. But it's just. It don't it's, worry. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a wild it's road. It is, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, late, so it was like, I think you said 05, you were taking care of your, your grandfather, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. I know you've probably been taking care of him for a long time, but 05 was, what, the road to the Arnold, right? Or yeah, it, yeah, well, um, I, I've actually uh, I had, I had moved to Florida, and that's a cool story we should talk okay. about. Okay, yeah, let's see. Um, I like that. Real quick on Florida, it was an important um, fork in the road in my life. Uh, I'll try to shorten the story in a couple sentences and not ramble on it, but uh, my team this one summer of 2000 had basically just, everybody just dispersed. Yeah, I had nobody to work out with. Went and their I'm own like, way. I'm fucking, I, I got to be number one in the world. I can't. I need. 
and nobody would show up to work out. I had to go wake up my handoff partner to come to oh, the gym. Man. And I just that got sucks. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I'm moving. I'm going to move the farthest fucking place away I can get from Washington yeah. State, and that's Florida. Yep. And um, <laughs> so I decided to get a plane, go down there to Fort Myers, and and I actually quit powerlifting because I got mad oh, wow. at the Wabdle promoter at the time uh-huh. because he wouldn't pay me. I, I was uh, I was able to do 700 pound benches at that time. Yeah. And I wanted a thousand bucks a bench at his yeah. world competition well, yeah, in, in yeah. Vegas or Reno, and he wouldn't pay me. Yeah. And I was like, fuck this, man. I mean, I just got fed up and moved. And uh, so I'm just you know, going back to the bars, drinking Crown Royal, and I was like, maybe I should work out a little bit. So I stumbled into a Gold's, just doing 315 for reps, and this guy walked up to me with this uh, Pirelty magazine. And I'm in there for doing 700 pounds for, uh, in, in that summer of 2000. He goes, is this you? Are you Ryan Kennelly? And I'm like, yeah, that's me. And he goes, oh, we got to train. We got we to gotta do a meet. And I'm like, uh, he goes, I got chains. I go, what the, f-? I go, he's got bands. What are bands? Yeah, like, I don't know what you that know? is. And, uh, long story short, we trained for a bench uh, a contest called the B- uh, Bench for Cash in Daytona, Florida. And a special invite to go yeah. there. And I had credentials to go. Went there, long story short, missed all my lifts. Met Louis Simmons, and the rest yeah. is history because I talked to him for two days in a row for three hours. He told me how to use the bands to change the West oh, Side Method, Method, West Side Methods conjugate yeah. training, and uh, I did all that. And That's badass. Became the bench monster. Yeah. But, uh, no, taking care of my grandfather, I had moved back from Florida. I lived there for a year. Oh, okay. Couldn't get used to the weather. The yeah. Humidity, oh yeah, the humidity spiders, sucks. The s- mosquitoes, the yeah. rednecks. All kinds of crazy Whoa. shit down there. <laughs> so anyway, I was like, oh, well, great, great place to visit, not a place yeah. I want to live. So I uh, got out of there and uh, moved back, and I was headed to Portland, Oregon, actually. I have family okay. there that own a construction business, and they, I figured I'd get on with them, move to Portland. And uh, my grandfather said, no, you need to come here. You know, you, I need to take, you got, this is your house. You, I'm going to sign the will over. It's going to be yours. I'm like, well, we'll hop through there. We'll re-sign the will, then we'll continue to Portland. Yeah. I wasn't there for about three weeks before the lights went out in the house. I go, Grandpa, why are the lights out? Yeah, and because he didn't pay the bill, he was starting oh, to lose money. Oh man, the yeah, it started. And it went down okay. seriously fast, and um, that was in 2002. By 2003 oh, and four, I was taking care of him 23 hours a day. The only hour I had there was training, and I would yeah. either have to um, bring him turn to all the, the lights off in the house, uh, close the breakers off, hide all the knives, turn the oh, door knob inside out, lock it, leave him there. I ended up just taking him to the gym. Yeah, and he would go to the gym and sit and just do leg extensions and. But it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. And, I, um, but that lasted. And then Road to the Arnold started, uh, I believe, summer of 04. And uh, by that time, you know, it was um, um, very hard to balance two things, trying yeah. to do this video and um, uh, Gold, take care of him. Yeah. He ended up passing in June of 05. Oh, okay. So we, we had just finished um, the Road to the Arnold uh, at the 2005 Arnold. And so when it just when it came out, uh, my grandfather passed, and then I – um, it was kind of like, whoa, what do I do now? I've been taking care yeah. of him for three years, and now I'm kind of like, I'm kind of lost. Yeah, it's and like I didn't know what to do. So it took me. There was a transformation period there where I had to figure out um, what my next goal was in life. Yeah, because it, you know I've been doing two things at yeah, once. Yeah, trying to balance. Yeah. But that was hard. He had dementia, Alzheimer's, and some. He would. Uh, there were nights where he'd hold a butcher knife like Michael Myers has yeah. in Halloween. He'd hold it to my Damn. throat like this, and he was. He didn't know who I was. Fuck. Um, That's there was some times crazy he would shit. take his. Uh, he would take a butcher knife over to the neighbor's house, knock on the door, ask for a sandwich. Yeah. Just, just some crazy shit. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's cool tough. Disease, it's man. tough. Yeah. You know, so that was hard to watch and and see and um, but. Yeah, it toughened it's, me, if anything. I mean, yeah. I, I learned from it and. Um, how, so how did you kind of stay stay focused like? You know what I mean? Like, because a lot of people could have been easily like, all right, man, I'm going to take a, uh, I'm done. I need to take a little step away from this. Well, it's funny you mention that because I did it 23 hours a day, you know, seven days a week, you know, and I would go to the Arnold um, uh-huh. and I'd have my mom come up or my uncle come up and they couldn't handle it. Three days. Yeah. They would, they would, how the fuck are you doing this, man? Yeah. And I, I just, I had a system, you know, he would go to bed at nine o'clock and that's kind of when my night, when my day would start. I would, oh, I kind of didn't okay. wake up until. Like 11, Late, yeah. this is how it worked for me. I got up at 11, he had already eaten breakfast and he yeah. just, uh, he didn't, couldn't drive, so he, yeah. just, he just sat at home. Just chilling. And so I'd get up and I'd take him to McDonald's for lunch and then I'd take him to the gym and then he'd want to go to, he, all he would eat was McDonald's for a while. So I kept taking yeah. him to McDonald's and I would take my chicken and rice there and eat it there. Yeah. And then um, he would go to bed around nine and that's when my quiet time started. That's when I would watch TV, that's when I would start, study. Yeah, you know, start doing your thing. I was still learning the bench press game. I was yeah. still figuring out, um, uh, there was a bench shirt uh, that just came out called yeah. the Phenom, the ends are yeah, made, and yeah. I was trying to move into that shirt, yeah. and so um, there were things I was working on, and 
I had going, and that was that was what? my time. And then pretty soon I had all the free time in the world. Yeah. In 2005, and um, I decided to really put the put it on the gas. Yeah. And go forward and um, and try to uh, br- get my record back for one because I don't know if anybody knows this, but August 2002 or four, I uh, August 2002, I don't know the exact Saturday it happened on, but I became the first man in history to bench press 800 pounds. Yeah. That record stood for not very long, like, a, yeah. like maybe eight months or something, and it got broke. And I realized I had to get my record back. Yeah, so I, had to yeah, I got to get back on the like, grind. Yeah, training, serious yeah. training now. I don't have to take care of my grandfather. Yeah. I'm going to use all of everything. And, and focus. He would, he would want me to do. He was my biggest yeah. fan at my meets. Yeah, you know? for so sure. I, I figured I'm going to go 110% yeah. and do what he want me to do and just, and just yeah. keep so crushing I, it. That's what I did, yeah. Just that, that's, that's badass, chase, man. Chasing the dream, you know? Yeah. So on that, on that Arnold note, man, you – you and Scott were going lift for lift, basically. Like, it was him, then you, yep. him, then you. How did your guys' relationship kind of evolve? Because, like, I seen your guys' podcast last year, and you guys yeah. were, like, fucking best friends. Was it always that way, or no. were you guys kind of like, fuck him? No, like, it's still, you know what it's I mean? Still, like, it's still hot and cold with him, man. Yeah. It's really weird. Um, I met him in the two th- my first time to the Arnold. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, 2002. I'm a new guy there, and um, um, uh, I'm walking out there, and I get to the warm-up area. And all the really cool bench pressers are over here on this one bench. And over here on this Forza bench, there's this guy who's Scott Mendelson. I didn't know his name. Yeah. And some other guy I never, I couldn't figure out what he was doing there because he didn't, he didn't bench or anything. He was just there lifting on it. And I don't know who he was. Okay. So I'm like, I'll just warm up with this guy. He looks like a big dude. looks like he's cool. And uh, he did something. And I, was, and I walked up and, hey, you mind if I get 225? And he fucking snapped at me. And he goes, yeah, but you better hurry. <laughs> like, Scott, what a dick, yeah. dude. Yeah. Long Scott. story short, um, I had already met Louis Simmons, uh, you know, the year before in okay. October. So this is six months of Louis training. Oh And shit. I actually went out to that Arnold and I, I PR'd. My best bench Damn. at the time was 733. I yeah. did 739 on the Arnold stage for the first time in front of 7,000 yeah. people, Fucking, which is not an easy task. Yeah. That's Mendelson shit. did 755. Okay. okay. And the next day, and I, st- I got a picture of it. But I went and found him in the uh, hallway where they're having the WPO, the three lift guys, on Sunday. Uh, and he was in there at, at his booth, and I don't know what booth it was. And I walked up to him, and I said, uh, and he goes, I'm, I'm going to take your record. We took a picture first. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to take your record. And he got my face. He goes, you better train harder. <laughs> well, hey, buddy. That was March. I went home, yeah. and then a month later, I did a 764 as a guest lifter in the Wabble Federation okay. in my hometown. Fuck. May of 2002. Yeah. I did uh, 785, and yeah. I thought at the time Anthony Clark was the all-time best yeah. ever with 800. Yeah. And I found out from the statistician who maintains the records the stats that he was only yeah. credited with a 785. Oh. So um, I'm blowing past Mendelssohn, and um, uh, the Wabble Federation that I started in had a meet in Houston, Texas. That's where okay. Anthony Clark, and Anthony Clark was alive yeah. at this time, I believe. No, he wasn't. Uh, God, I can't remember when he passed. Anyway, uh, so he's like, you need to go down to Houston and take Anthony Clark's record in his hometown. I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so yeah. I go down there. I open with 755. I, I make it. I take two shots at 800, and it just it didn't work. Um, not my day. Yeah. Fly home. Was in the cards. My tail between my legs. I'm all butt hurt. I get home. Sunday or Monday morning, the phone rings, and it's Gus Rethwich. He's the president of that federation. And he goes, Ryan, you're coming to my meet next weekend in Portland. I go, no, I'm not. I said, when I do a meet, the next weekend, I am shit. I have nothing that weekend. And he goes, no, yeah, you're exact. coming. I'm going to call your numbers. And then I was just like, fuck. I just grabbed two shots of testosterone. and like, went, let's like, get it, bro. Day. Yeah. And I just took yeah, the whole week go. off. Okay. And it didn't work out. Like I a just, deload. I just, just slept. Yeah. Showed up at the meet. I go, okay, Gus, what am I opening with? I like to open with like 730 something and go right to 800. Yeah. Get right to it. Yeah, get to the business. He's opening 683, and I go, what? I wait a 683? minute. Yeah. What the fuck it? Yeah. Okay, 683. And then he took Smoked me 738, it. put that up, and then uh, we went for a PR or 785.3 or something, I think it was. It was a, or maybe it was a tie. I don't know. Yeah. I put that up, and then I had a fourth attempt, 800.1. And um, I remember when I went out for it. I, was, I had that mindset like um, uh, today's the day, man. I, yeah. This is going That's up. Me. This is, yeah. is, is going. Yeah, and it came out there and went down and uh, crooked a little bit. And then I straightened her out and locked it, and um, the rest is history, man. And then uh, shortly after that, you know, life changed real quick. I wrote a book. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, a couple years yeah. later, we uh, did the DVD here. And yeah. 
That's and then I, and I also ass. became the bench monster too. Yeah. That nickname. So. Yeah. How did that? I gotta ask. How did the, how'd you get the bench monster? The Who? Bench, well, or like, what? Right after the eight hundred, um, there was a there was a company called um, oh, where, Ashley. What were they out of Coeur d'Alene, West Campin? Monster Muscle Magazine. Okay. Monster Muscle Superstore. They sold Inzer gear. Okay. The guy that owned it at the time was was named West Campin, and he's passed away. Um, he you know, he was there at that meet when I did the eight hundred. And um, I uh, went over to the booth, and he goes, oh, you got to write a book. I've never written a book. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, oh, we, we, you got to have a website. I go, okay. And he goes, I'm going to send you some website domain names when you get home. So I got home, and he called me up. He goes, Ryan, you're not going to believe this. And I go, what? He goes, you know, you, you don't even own your own name. And I go, well, like, what do you mean? Ryan, RyanCanelli.net.org and .com, somebody went out and bought them. And I'm like, well, who what bought the them? Fuck? John Enzer. The guy who makes the bench press. Oh, shirts. what? Enzo bought that shit? Up, dude, I called him up. And <laughs> That's I'm crazy. Hot. I'm like, hey, motherfucker, I want my name. Yeah. And he's like, oh, they're here for you anytime, but I'll make your website for you. Like, he wanted to have strings no attached. No way. That's some and, shit. And, yeah, and I, didn't, I was like, no, dude. Yeah. And uh, there's more to that story. But yeah. I was like, uh, F this. And, the, and then the guy said, well, screw that. We got to, uh, do you like Bench King, Bench Monster, or Monster Bencher? And I had to decide, like, in five seconds. Uh, yeah. I saw Bench Monster on a, on a forum somewhere on the internet so yeah. they use that as a handle and like bench monster fucking hated it yeah <laughs> didn't like it i didn't like it until about 2005 yeah i hated it you were like i, I don't even bench monster. I fucking hate that You're like don't even call me that shit now it's kind of <laughs> now it's sunk in and i yeah. like it now but yeah now so it's, i can't, it's, became the bench monster uh, yeah after all that too so. that's crazy i did not know Enzo took your shit like that yeah, that's still, some and shit and we um on a dave palumbo radio show uh, Dave Palumbo had interviewed me in 2010, and I, I'd made that point that he had stolen my um, domain. And at the yeah. time, you could go on register.net or org or com and look on there and type it in, and it was owned by somebody in Longview. Yeah. And uh, Inzer ended up selling it to somebody overseas. What? That's yeah, some crazy so it makes shit. It, makes it yeah. really hard to get back. Then now. It's, yeah, that's now crazy. Now you're looking at thousands of dollars to file, file paper. All that to, shit to get it yeah, taken pay, care yeah. of. So he's a piece what? of shit. And uh, I told, I told, that's I told the whole world on a radio show how, how, how he was a fag and. He would fucking say things to me at two in the morning on my phone that you would never think he would say. Yeah, just I, some... op- I opened the book on him and it hurt. Yeah, I to. Yeah, you want to fuck with me? I'm gonna well, get yeah, you especially back when someone getting over when someone takes all your shit. I mean, especially like that's your yeah, name, so I, like your shit. Yeah, you know, I mean, you slap me in the face and I'm, I'm gonna punch you in the gut and kick you. Yeah, ass, motherfucker. So that's some shit. I hit shit. him hard, dude. And it yeah. Hurt. Oh He's yeah. Hard for life, dude. And, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I just did what I had to do. To, and, uh, but life moved on, and I, I had, uh, I don't know what happened to benchmonster.com. I think it's still out there owned by some somebody, somebody. that knows me, so. Yeah. So that's crazy. So if I was to look at benchmonster.com, it's not even, you don't even own it, right? It's uh, someone else, I, someone I overseas? Into it. No. Somebody, uh, my cousin, who's the head um, SEO of, uh, he's a big wig in the computer world. Okay. He's got somebody who's got it um, anchored down for me. I just. Uh, got it kind of situated. I don't, don't want to manage a website. Yeah. I, I, just, I, I do enough of personal training, online clients that yeah. keep me busy. And I remember when we, when we had it, I had to go on there and update and. Do all that. It's, like, it's more work. It's and, a process. And I was making yeah. money off it or nothing. Yeah. So I, just, I don't really care. I, yeah. just, I am who I am. And, That's and, it. Um, I didn't trademark my name and every dumb dick from. Uh, Russia to fucking Hawaii became a bench monster and yeah. called themselves the bench monster. Yeah, I mean, like there's only I one bench care, monster, man, man and not, that's yeah, yeah. This is the bench monster. That's what I was you saying. Are a bench monster, but I, I am named the, the bench monster. The original, the OG, right here. So, um, so going into to you know, because you elevated from you know, I mean, like you setting all these records, and then it's like oh seven, oh eight, everything just completely changes. Like you just you step on another planet, basically. Yep. What changed? Was it the diet? Was okay, it the... a couple things. I've told this story time and time again, but I keep forgetting to add one important um, aspect to the story. Uh, summer of 06, 2006, I was trying to get that, uh, I was trying to get the 308 world record because I think yeah. John, Rich Lack had benched 900 or something yeah. that's super heavy. And I was, yeah. he was wearing a Phenom shirt. I don't know if you're familiar, anybody's yeah. familiar with yeah. bench shirts, but shirts. the Phenom shirt is a, like a rubbery material. Yeah. And I was it, wearing a Rage X shirt, which is a polyester, which doesn't have flex in it. Yeah, it's not as. And that that whole that goes into the Bloody Sunday story too. Okay, okay. But so I, I uh, I'm trying. I'm using that shirt because at the time I've done, I did like an 850 in it. Inzer sent me one of those um, uh, Phenom shirts, and I got out of the bag, and and it had these floppy dog ears for uh, sleeves. Uh huh. And I took the shirt, and I'm like, this thing's like a. And a I don't know about this. It's like yeah. and shit. Yeah. I put it on, dude, with like 500 and something, and I and I like, this fucking thing ain't gonna bench yeah. nothing. I took <laughs> it off, threw it in a corner. That was summer of 06. 
Okay. Uh, come around to 2007, the first uh, stop on my meat list is the Mendelssohn Classic, and that's okay. in uh, Pasadena, California. So I'm, I'm, I'm sitting around 310 body weight, and I go out there, and that's the Sunday, bloody Sunday day. Okay. I go out, and um, uh, I, I opened with 902 or 903, whatever is in kilos. I put that up. Then it went 946 or 56, and the, the cert that I switched into was too tight, and it stopped like an inch right. from my chest, yeah. and all that pressure cause the uh, tear ducts have the ability to bleed out yeah you know, when people cry yeah. tears go through those ducts yeah. into your nose well i got bloody nose and my uh when i get it up, it shoots up out of both tear ducts like four inch streams oh wow so when i came down that pressure's happening that blood just shoots out into my uh eye wells yeah and so i stand up and i just shake like this because you get blood in your eye it's fucking yeah hard it's, to see. yeah, fuck, yeah so i would I know that, but so that's crazy shake it like this and you got plasma going everywhere but um, uh, so after that meet, I was like, okay, I took home five grand there. And you got to remember back before 2008, between I think five, uh, six, seven, and eight, I was clearing like 25 to 30 grand a year bench pressing, winning contests, uh, you know, I was making sw- money. Sweeping it. Just doing it. Yeah. Fun. And yeah. Uh, the Arnold Classic was next. And that was like three weeks later after the Mendelssohn meet. So I stepped out there to that one. That was the year I had the Mark Henry incident. Okay. Um, I uh, opened with 903 again because I just, just did it like three weeks prior put it up like 135 and then I went 956 again and I think I touched this time I just couldn't lock it yeah. won the show again Smoked I was 2500 there came home and um, there was another meet APF meet in Spokane put on by a guy by the name of Brent Mikesell and this was uh this was late April uh, Arnold Classic it came and went and I was like Let's, I'm gonna do that one there I'm gonna go out there in the Ray Jacks do one more um, big show I went out there and I remember on the way to the meet, I had to park far away, and I'm, you know, getting there, getting there, and I sit down, and I'm, I'm like dying. Puffing and you know, puffing, like, yeah. And, and there's this old timer. Um, he's not. He's a great powerlifter who lives in our town. His name is Skip Sandberg, and he's in his okay. 70s. And I go, what's going on, Skip? And he's like, yeah, you're winded. I go, fuck, extremely. And he goes, do you have sleep apnea? I said, what's that? And he goes, uh, he started describing. I said, when you sleep, do I dream? I said, I, I, last time I had a dream was probably two years ago. Are you fatigued all the time to get out of bed? I go, I don't even want to get out of bed. <laughs> you know, it's time. like, you, you need to go in to be diagnosed for sleep apnea. Well, I don't even, I can't even remember what I did at that meet. Came home and I had a, I had a pretty cool doctor in Moses Lake at the time. And okay. I went into this doctor. This was, this was back when you can go in and say, man, I want to try some Valium. Okay, here you go. You know, it's like anything. You <laughs> yeah. know? And uh, I, I said, I got sleep apnea. I need a CPAP machine. And, he go, and I go, what do I need to do? And he goes, well, you got to go to sleep study. That's $2,000. And then I go, fuck that. I, uh, I need a prescription for a CPAP. And he goes, what do you want me to do? And I said, uh, get your prescription pad out and write CPAP. Yeah, write me one. <laughs> he literally pulled it out of his pocket, wrote CPAP <laughs> no machine, way. ripped it off and handed it to go. me. Yeah. I went to a site. I won't tell you which name. And yeah. I, said, I faxed him that, uh, that um, Letter. prescription yeah. and um, I got, got a CPAP it. machine. No, well, I didn't know how to turn it on, do anything about it. So I yeah. a place called Lincare, and I said, "Hey, I got this machine. What do I do? It's an automatic." And she goes, "Well, we're going to set it here and here, and you're going to wear this mask." And um, you know, I have spent I don't know how old I was by then, thirties, you know, and I spent thirty years of my life going to bed without a jellyfish attached yeah. to my face. Yeah. So I take it home, and I don't mean to tell the whole story, but you know, this was um, this was just before May, and uh, I remember the first night I put it on. I had it on for like uh, thirty minutes, and I just ripped it off, turned it off. Next night, I had it on probably for 30 minutes, and then I, I was in tears. I yeah. said, I fucking can't do that. I can't yeah. sleep with it's this on too, my fucking yeah, face. Yeah, it's too much. Third night, I put it on at 10 o'clock. I woke up at noon the next day. Damn, dude, you got, got some dude, sleep. Dude, yeah, you got some Z's. I, I remember the dream. Yeah. <laughs> I have not forgot the dream. That's I was crazy. in my black truck, and I could fly in my truck. Yeah, so you were zooming through the skies, dude, man. Yeah, went to bed at 10. <laughs> I, I was like, I got up, and I looked around. I was like, did I go through a time warp? Yeah. Like, what time did I go to bed? Okay, I remember that. It was like 10 o'clock. It's fucking noon. Oh, I didn't think nothing man. Of it. Uh, next, then I put it on that night again. And um, long story short, in a two-week period, I, I, I just like became, I had all this energy now. I was able to eat more food. I went down to the Lynn Care, and I said, yeah. I'm like a whole new person here. Yeah, I love happy. this. Yeah. I'm like, I'm able to eat more food. I'm dreaming. I'm drooling on the pillow. And she pulled out that chip out of my machine and plugged it in and it printed out a, a spreadsheet yeah. of how long I'm sleeping. And, and she came in the office. She goes, you're never going to believe this. And I go, what? You've been averaging 12 to 14 hours every night. And I said, I know. I go to bed at 9 at night and I get up at 10 or 11 yeah. the next day. I don't even get up to pee. Yeah, you're like, I'm like, out. Yeah, so I remember. And one night I, was, I slept 14 hours. And I stood up that printout from 2007. Yeah. Well, 
I decided uh, that, that uh, first thing I realized with the sleep apnea machine was I could eat more food. I was sponsored all over town. I could walk yeah. into any joint in Moses that's Lake. That's me. Yeah. That's how big I was. Yeah. And um, I'd done it n- numerous times. I'd walk in and I'd tell them I wanted my employee discount. And at Burger King. Yeah, you're machine. getting it. Yeah. So, <laughs> I uh, quickly realized I could eat two Big Macs now instead of one. Oh, okay. okay so so now, that game changes. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I think I need I need to get in this Phenom shirt now. Because yeah. I think Gene Richlack, who um, did the first man to do 900, I think he had benched 1,000. Yeah. And he's wearing that shirt. And I was like, I got to learn this shirt. So I called up. I said, I want to learn this shirt. I, I think it needs to be tighter. Yeah. So he sent me one. And um, this was May. Uh, or June, first week of June, and I went. I did an exhibition lift out of meet in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, for Pride Powerlifting. Okay. I showed up in this shirt, and the plan was to open 905. And okay. And just get, put it up, maybe a 940. Yeah. I'd be happy for the day. Yeah. So I go out there, and um, I go out. I take the weight down, and it goes up hard, and I fuck. I turn around my hand off part, and I go, motherfucker. Wait a minute. I go, what the fuck, dude? 905? Yeah. It felt like a thousand five. Yeah. And I go, um, I go. Start go questioning nine, this shit. Go 920, dude, because yeah. I, I ain't got much left. I didn't feel like it was much and there. so I go sit down and huff in my oxygen tank, and my handoff guy comes back, and he goes, you're not going to believe this. He goes, they forgot to add the bar. So I just hit a PR, 945, 950. Oh, shit. I just, yeah. I, my best, best bench at the time was, uh, I think, a 903. Yeah. So I just yeah. did 950 or something. Oh, fuck. Oh, like, oh, 975. Yeah. 975 flies up. And I go, 1,010. Damn. And uh, we, uh, uh, long story short, it, it, one thing I've never told people, when I came down with that 1,010 and he got the press command, I opened my eyes and it was going so fast. It was like, I'm going to get this. But then I was like, I, I pulled the ticket. I, I didn't like do it. Like kind of. Dude, it was, it, I, I, hit, I know it sounds really weird to say. That's so crazy. It, yeah. It went up so fast. I almost, I, it just shocked me how fast. You're like, wait, right did here. I just do that? Like, like, I'm going to do this. And I was like, that it didn't happen. Oh. Right when I thought like it yeah. was gonna do it, yeah. it, just, it just like I everything I just turned it off. Went blank. Couldn't yeah, turn, yeah. That's, but, um, that's let's some see, shit. Let's continue on. 2007. Uh, a month later, I go to a bodybuilding show in Portland, Oregon. Exhibition okay. lift. I go down there. Long story short, um, 985 bench in a legit uh, uh, contest again down there. Damn. Just an exhibition lift. Yeah. And then we get the big invite to the Ukraine, and uh, okay. that, that was a tough trip. But uh, went over there and then benched a thousand pounds over there two times Damn. and uh, 120. Twenty-two thousand five hundred dollars in cash, and um, uh, yeah, yeah and, uh, that's came, shit. came back from that. And um, by the end of the year, I did one more meet in December, and I benched ten fifty. So if yeah. you look at the beginning of the year, I yeah. started with nine oh three, yeah, and then, then it was ten fifty. You know, I, I always talk about the CPAP machine, but a lot of people don't realize too was the change in the bench shirt. Yeah, that was a big uh, contributing factor. Yeah. also. the phenom. I changed in that phenom yeah. shirt, and I learned how to use it, and. Um, yeah, I don't know the so, rest is history. So I, recovery, I, I continued that run. Recovery and basically figuring out the shirt is kind of what elevated the whole fucking. Well, and I was getting with the CPAP machine. I was getting recovery sleep now. Rim yeah, sleep. So, so I you're... was able to train harder. Oh yeah. Supplements were working. Everything was working better. Yeah, it's just like kicked into like, overdrive, and oh, it was I, just I, like I can't say enough about it. I have four of them. I own four oh, yeah. machines. So yeah, that, yeah that's so. just the real deal. And if people don't realize sleep apnea is. It's a serious real shit. deal, man. Yeah. A lot of people have it. You don't have to have a 25-inch neck yeah. to sleep apnea. But yeah. If you have it, it's, uh, it's one of those things, you know, you die in your sleep. Yeah. You don't wake up sometimes. It's some scary shit. Yeah, yeah. it's scary. So I'm glad I was able figured to talk about that and figure that out. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it changed my life forever. And uh, I'm glad I, glad I did yeah. that. But that was a good year for me. Um, the next year, I uh, almost did an 11.05 bench press, I believe. And then the uh, economy hit. We had some... For yeah. all gas and all that bullshit, yeah. and then the prize money at comp- the competition just went away. Changed, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't able to go to this meet and do f- win five grand, or this meet and win twenty yeah. five. It, it just kind of got shut off. Yeah. And I was then I was like like holding like. Wait, what's do going I on? Do eleven hundred? Is anybody going to pay me for that, or is it just going to be another lift? Yeah. Then I was then I kind of waited too long because I, I knew if I, I I was I was hoping somebody called me up and say Ryan, if you come to my meet and people have called me done this before. Hey, can you come to my meet and put up a thousand pound bench? I go yeah, I yeah. Over. that's easy. Cool. Yeah. I do it all the time, but I was hoping somebody would call me and say hey, we'll offer you ten grand if you can come to my meet and do eleven hundred or something. Yeah. You know, but nobody was ringing my yeah. walls, and so I just kind of. Just, I think I ended up doing a 1080 that was uh, a soft lock, and I didn't get it. And then, then I decided to lose weight. And mm-hmm. then um, uh, I think that's when I came down, met uh, my girlfriend, lost a bunch of weight, uh, went down to 305 body weight, and did the 1075 world record. Damn, yeah. And, um, and then, yeah, that held yeah. that held for many years. Yeah, that shit held. Yeah, I was gonna say 13, 14 so, years. Yeah, that was that was cool to have that for a while and um, and do it at a, such a lighter body weight because 
being 356 pounds is not comfortable. Especially no, in the hell no. That's just not it's comfortable. It's not fun, dude. It's hard to tie your shoes. It's hard to you yeah. don't walk normal. It's kind of the reason, like, when I was that big, I always shopped at Walmart at midnight. Yeah. So I was just there with the guys that were stocking shelves. Cause yeah. I, I look like a weirdo pushing a cart to the store. <laughs> big it's, ass it's dude. Not, it's well, so there's, a, there's a picture of you on the internet. I can't. I, was going through pictures and there was one where your neck was just gone like yeah. it was just like non-existent oh, yeah. i was like i had never seen that picture before you were huge huge it was probably like when you're around 360. 363 i think was the biggest that's I, some uh, shit ever was and yeah, I, there's a video, there's a picture of it on my facebook there's a lady with a microphone holding it up this high and i and it just my boom. eyes are half shut yeah. Like, yeah that that's the biggest i ever was but I mean, it's it's, yeah, it's, just, it's man, scary no, 50, not fun calories a day yeah. i was eating it's a lot every, of work to, every to stay there, dude. too. But the eating was fun. Yeah. I was never hungry, but I was. it was steak and mashed potatoes and yeah. chocolate cream pie, um, 1,700 calorie shakes. Oh, yeah. Anything. I yeah. I mean, yeah. Loving I, it. I don't know where my cholesterol was at Yeah. The time. <laughs> You're like, but it was oh, fun. It was, it was way up there. But, uh, you know, there was, a, there was a time and place for that. And, yeah. Uh, you know, definitely tone those, all those things down now that I'm older. And, yeah. And uh, one thing about being my age now and everything i've learned along the way and uh it's, it's fun to pass it down to other people now yeah and see them excel at a younger that's, age with the that's training techniques and, and the strategies that i've uh designed showed them that work so. yeah so in the midst of, of you setting these records i seen your uh your nails you painted your nails black yeah. what inspired that what was what was the um, what was behind I that i was dating this girl at the time and i just i i don't want to i it, it's not like powerlifting needed some type of excitement i mean what well, first thing is, I mean, she would slap me in the face, you know, before we went out there, and yeah. it hurt because she could get yeah. hard. She benched four hundred pounds, and <laughs> but, then I'd bleed all over the place. Yeah. But then I was just like, um, I, I, I just, it was my, I was just bored. I just said, I'll paint my nails. I'll, I'll do some eyeliner so when it bleeds, yeah. it smears. And then I'll get a feather boa, yeah. and a pink shirt, and then I got this girl with hot chick with me, and I'm just gonna be different. For yeah, yeah, day. I'm gonna set the fucking, I'm gonna yeah, I'm thing, gonna set the tone. Yeah, this ain't gonna last forever. I yeah. know, but. Well, I'm just gonna do weird things. So, and then I wanted to get under people's skin. Yeah, I, I didn't care if anybody liked yeah. me. Yeah, I was out there. You were there to do and, you. And uh, yeah, I was, yeah, I was enjoying it. So that's fucking bad. It was fun. Yeah, I, I liked it because it kind of stood out. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah, not I, anybody I was care doing what that. People say as long as people were talking about me, you know, yeah. good or bad, I don't care. Hey. Yeah, that's badass. Oh, uh, so with because you said you know you lost uh you know weight and started dieting down and stuff. So before any of that happened, was there any kind of indicator where you're like uh, before your heart incident? Was there any kind of indicator where you should have done it, but you just ignored it because you were trying to like you chase the the number one spot? No, there was no indicator. I just I just knew that I was I was creeping up in age, and you know being you know over three hundred and fifty pounds it's is just, just not healthy. Yeah, it's not and sustainable. I, I wasn't yeah. eating clean food. Yeah, I was eating anything and everything, and I just knew that um, I had to change things up and. I, so that's why I just cleaned up the diet a lot, and um, yeah, and um, then I was worried about losing so much weight that I, my strength would follow, which it does. Yeah, but I did yeah. it real slow, and um, and um, now I have the problem where my body just wants to balloon up. It's yeah, like, I can't keep it down. It yeah. just wants to go. It's like we've been there. I want to get back yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I I starve it, and then I eat a meal or two, and it's just ten pounds, like easy. Yeah, overnight. Yeah, yeah that's some like crazy shit. Right now, I'm not even trying. Yeah, to you're like, bro, I'm trying to diet. Yeah, dude, I have to fight to stay at you know yeah. 290 and 280. Damn, it's, it's tough, man. Yeah. But, yeah so, the, so the so the hard thing just kind of happened then, like uh, it's kind of yeah, out of the blue. Basically, um, I was uh, you know, I was drinking drinking a lot of caffeine. Okay. I was getting up and I was uh, not energy drinks, but just uh, coffee, putting seven like scoops that. of Folgers in, in, oh, in a coffee yeah. maker and then one cup of water. Yeah, it's what's coming out like yeah. Texas tea, man. Yeah, and um, yeah, I just got up one morning and there was snow outside, and I drank that cup of coffee, and you know it gives me a little buzz, and I decided to go out and um, shovel snow, and uh, this was 2015, and I was really big, you know, 350 yeah. again. So I went out and uh, I took one shovel of snow and threw it, and I'm like, <laughs> dying. Like I get fuck, dude. I'm, I, <laughs> I have low blood sugar or something, so yeah. I went in and I sat down. And I'm just like, God, I feel like my blood sugar's low. Yeah. Like I need yogurt or something. something so I yeah. get up and I go to the kitchen and on my way there, I block out and go to the ground. Boom. And I caught myself and I was like, something ain't fucking right. And my girlfriend was out of town at the time. Oh, for two shit. Two more days. So you're so I don't know solo. What I, I don't know what I did the next day. But yeah. When she came home, that I said, this happened, you know, and I fell to the ground. And she goes, you need to go to the, um, not the ER, but the urgent care clinic. And I'm like, no, let's go eat. Let's go eat, you know? Yeah. So we, she got me to go over there and we're sitting in there and I go, when can we get out of here? I'm hungry. 
and they did the uh, little heart test on me, and it showed I was in AFib. And next thing I know, the fucking fire department's showing up, and Damn, they're not allowing nine. me to leave. Yeah. They're, they're telling me that they, I need to go. I could drop dead immediately. And I'm like, what the fuck? But wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. Well, long story short, they um, cardioverted me. They shocked me out of it. And um, oh wow. I knew I had to lose weight, so yeah. I hooked up uh, with Roger Baker. Okay. Uh, big, uh, uh, he's a big name yeah. in Washington yeah. State. He owned a gym called Rab Fitness, Rab and I Fitness. said, Roger, I got to lose weight, man. But, yeah. you know, every time, if I do it my way, I'll go keto and I'll lose all my strength. Can you do it and help me maintain muscle? And he goes, oh, yeah, I goes, this is going to be fun. You're going to be one lean son of a bitch. And <laughs> he, put me, he put me on a diet. I was doing car, a little bit of uh, cardio a couple times a week in the diet. And, it, uh, man, I went from, th- uh, well, I tried it my own way first. I had 355. I got down to 330, and I'm like, it wouldn't go any, any lower. Yeah, I'm it wasn't like, working. Salads and chicken yeah. salads and shit. It's still, I won't, I won't. Yeah, it's nothing's dropping. He hands me a menu of like six different meals that I'm supposed to eat. And I'm like, I'm eating four and not losing weight. You want me to eat six now? Yeah, so it's, make fucking yeah. Six. <laughs> I don't think but it's going to happen. It and, and man, I, the, the weight just started pounding off. Like in, in 12 weeks, I went from 330 to 275. Damn. Like, it went down so yeah. fucking fast. He's like, you need a cheat meal. I go, okay, what's that? Goes, oh, <laughs> anything you want. Yeah. Like sushi. Um, okay. And, but I still got that diet plan. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm intended to get back on it. Yeah. Because I'm I'm having a hard time. Um, um, and I don't look good, man. I mean, I, it look, it's fun You're to be like fucking massive, bro. What do you around. mean? You look But I want to look, I wanna, I wanna look yeah, the part yeah. with the vascularity, yeah. you know, and the veins are I popping feel it. out. Yeah. So I'm going to clean, clean it up. I said that I was supposed to do that like months ago, but you know how it is. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Diets are no fun. No, but, hell um, no, they aren't. <laughs> yeah, so I got a hold of him. He got me down in body weight. Haven't had an incident since. And I know better I know better to get up, you know, any heavier than 320. Yeah, so, so there you kind yeah, of so I, I dial stay back. Safe and, and, and um, you know, I can't, you can't do it forever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You, you're not 20, 22 to 27 years old for the rest of your life, man. Yeah. Eventually you get old and you got to, you know, Starts change catching gears. up. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to move on to the speaking bluntly segment. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to change the, the, uh, mood and moving to this uh so let's walk me through like the blunday bloody sunday from start to fin like your back room warm-up i guess okay. to touching the platform your, your thoughts initially from it happening the whole okay well i believe thing. uh sunday bloody sunday was the mendelssohn classic that was uh february of 2000 and um what was that seven Okay. Um, I'm wearing that, that compression shirt that's really tight, mm-hmm. and when you bring the weight down, that compression shirt it's is just, like an elephant standing on your yeah, chest. Yeah, it's tight as fuck, so smashing. When come, yeah. yeah, when you're coming down 900 pounds, you want to actually cave in and give into it. Yeah. So it is the pressure is so bad to your much. head. Yeah. But you have to do the opposite. You have to pull your head back and bring your Sit chest back. up. Now all that pressure is going up here. Yeah. And it's got to give somewhere. So I believe my 903 opener, when I opened with 903, it happened a little bit out there. Uh-huh. I think it just one side uh, came out. But what happened with the 956 is I came down with it and it wouldn't touch. So all that pressure is just sitting there. And I think the video, it's like four seconds uh-huh. and it wouldn't yeah. touch. So then they take it off of me. But while I'm there, that pressure is the, the heart just pumping that yeah. blood out into those, into those eye wells. And I got up and shook like this. I remember I opened my eyes and I'm like, oh great, I don't got blood in my eyes. I can make it back there and wipe this off. And that's when that, uh, that one guy got the picture of me with the tongue out. Yeah. You know, and I, yeah. This is another day at the office. Man. Yeah. But, that's you know, so that's blood blood pressure. You know. Yeah. A lot of sodium in the diet. You yeah. Know, and uh, shit not happened. the health. And I had sleep yeah. apnea, so I was probably not the best time to. But they say you know if that if you don't have that blood come out, you know you can have what's called like a, a aneurysm of some sort, where the blood up in the brain, in your where brain just kind of poof. Yeah. yeah, so I'm glad it decided to give where it that gave. way. Yeah, and uh, people talk about it to this day. They love that, that Sunday bloody Sunday sh- that's shit, just man. Iconic, man. It's yeah. an iconic uh, moment. Even, uh, a meet in 2000, I did. It was where I did my first 700 pound bench. I did three of them in a row. It was in Salem or Springfield, Oregon, in a hotel ballroom. And I remember every time I got up to um, bench, I, I mean, I literally the back fl- warm up area of that floor. I left just Covered. a gallon of blood on the floor. Damn. And it wasn't from it was from that, yeah. But it was just getting up and then, and then it just getting when I got off the bench, yeah, it was just dripping out. everywhere. I mean, yeah, I, I really feel bad looking back at that <laughs> because it I left a lot of blood on the floor yeah. there that day too. So Bleeding well, Sunday Bloody Sunday is the best one, man. Yeah, that's yeah. just iconic. Yeah, that was a one time thing. I don't think I can do it again. Yeah, I want to. So. Yeah, that moment's gonna live in powerless to history forever. It's, it's super cool though. Yeah, that's bad. Every time I see somebody have that effect on it, you know, it's uh. It's um, it's gangster, man. Yeah, it's I, sick. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. That, that's what I did. Yeah, that shit's badass. So you, uh, Daniel told me this story. This shit scared the shit out of me to do trendy, and I still did it. But the Jack in the Box story. So what? I guess what happened? 
Okay, or, Jack. Tra- of the Black <laughs> Canary, um, 2004 January. Um, you know, um, taking supplements. You know, yeah. synthetic male hormone derivatives. But this one veterinary um, product called Trimbalone. You know, phenomenal strength yeah. drug. Very, <laughs> yeah, very crazy. strong stuff. Makes you stronger than hell. Yeah. But also makes you very ornery, and it makes you um, um, makes you lose sleep too. It, uh, oh yeah. It God, it makes you strong. Yeah. Well, I was getting ready for oh, what, 2004, probably the Mendelssohn Classic, because that would have been the meet coming yeah. up. <laughs> and um, you know, I stay up late, and um, I was on. Um, the long-acting version of it. Yeah, train to eat. And, yeah. and uh, I was taking some testosterone and whatever else. And it's, uh, I don't know, 11.40. And I'm, that's my prime time, man. I'm yeah, up, you're and, up, yeah, functioning. I'm up doing things on the internet, studying, learning, watching other people bench and checking out their technique. Always studying. Yeah. Anytime I'm on the internet, I'm not looking at porn. Yeah. I'm looking at shit to get better. You know, supplements. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to find out what I need. Yeah. Big, you know, yeah. and um, SARMs and shit. And I just, there was a commercial on the TV, you know, Jack in the Box, we don't make it till you order it. And I'm like, God, that sounds good. Like, let's go get yeah, it. Yeah. I'll have a burger and some yeah. curly fries and shit. Let's go. I uh, mosey over there, 1150, uh, and I got the double burger and the curly fries, the ranch, and a large dag coat. Yeah. And as soon as I gave the order, I looked up and the arm is sticking out the window with my bag. And I go, make it. Bitch didn't make it to order. Yeah, yeah wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, like it's been sitting here. I got that home and uh, it was like like somebody warmed it under their armpit. Damn. I fucking ate it, but I was pissed. Yeah. So I ripped the receipt off and I came back at noon the next day. And I walked in. I was like, yeah, I came here last night at 11, 12 o'clock. And your motto is you don't make it till we order. I ordered this meal and it was like somebody had warmed up under their armpit. And I and I, I want I want this meal cooked fresh. Yeah. And I'm talking to the cashier. Yeah. And this heavy set uh, lady in the cooking window there is looking at me and yells at me if you want it fresh you can come back and make it on your own yeah before she could even take a breath after that <laughs> i had slapped the counter with one hand and one foot was on top of the counter already hopping over that base. Over. yeah <laughs> Duh. I, dude i stopped myself yeah like, wait a minute i counted i went and sat down I probably spit my fucking food out yeah i got the meal ate it I came home and I called my buddy. I said, "Come over to my house and get this shit now." Yeah, it was I'm over twenty it. minutes and I never touched it again. Yeah, trends. It's the bad dev- stuff, dude. Yeah, the devil in the vial. They said, man, Strength that's in the vial, but yeah. also divorce in the vial. It's yeah. prison sentence in the vial. It's a it's, whole bunch of things. Yeah, it's it's bad, man. It's bad. But it's uh, phenomenal stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, it works. It just it doesn't yeah. work for me, man. <laughs> I, I can't know. I can't put up with people. It's hard to put up with people in general in this judgmental society we live in. Being a big dude. Yeah. I mean, I get stink eye all the time. I get compliments, yeah. too. Yeah. I also get, uh, you know, like, yeah. um, below the belt compliments. Like, are you fucking with me? Are, yeah. you, are you serious? Yeah. So, you know, I got I to deal with the public and, and everywhere I go, dude. Because, yeah. you know, I wear it on my sleeve, man. I walk it, around with no sleeves. The, uh, and, you know, yeah, I attract attention, like, dude, Yeah. So. Well, I, the first, our first interaction, I, it was like one of my first, I think it was my first meet or my second meet. And I didn't know nothing about powerlifting yet. So Daniel was like, hey, my buddy Ryan's going to be there. Um, just ask him to lift you off. I was yeah. like, okay, cool. Not thinking it's the bench monster. Yeah. So I'm I sitting there. This. You walk in there, and then everybody's just eyes on you. And I'm like, oh, who's that guy? He's fucking massive. And then somebody walks by, and I hear, oh, it's Ryan. I'm like, oh, that's the guy I have to go <laughs> ask for a spot. <laughs> I, I, remember I, that. I go up there, and I'm like, Dude, hey, you're standing with guys just as big as you. Yeah. I don't remember. Who you're t- I think you're talking to Cody Plum and someone else. But I go, yep. t- and you're like, What's up? And you're like, yeah, I'll spot you. Please yeah. just let me know. And I was like, okay, cool. You yeah, know, I like, that stuff, man. yeah, it's it, it's badass. But it was definitely the first time I met you. I was like, oh man, I gotta ask this. What big year was ju- that? 15, uh, 16, 17? 17, I yeah. think. 17, 18. Yeah. No, 18 maybe. Yeah, 18. Kinda, it was recent. Yeah, it wasn't too long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was that was, that was funny. Um, so let's go into the snap story, man. I seen you did a, a little dark comedy. Yeah, yeah. dark comedy. Um, so how'd that come about? Well, how did that come about? Um, I just came from uh, Dubuque, Iowa in 2007, July. I had benched uh, 1074 out there weighing 335. Nice bench. Crazy nice clean shit. bench yeah. out there. So I got back from there, and um, somebody, God, who was it? My name was brought up. They were doing a dark comedy, uh, filming a dark comedy in Portland, Oregon. And uh, the, 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 the role was for Bob Sapp. Big Bob Sapp. Yeah. Well, okay. He was over in Tokyo and doing his uh, wrestling gig, and they didn't needed somebody big. Yeah. And my name came up, and my phone rang, and the producer says, 
I got your name. I don't know who dropped my name, but I really appreciate it. Yeah. I got your name from so and so. Um, we're doing this, this, and this. There's a small part. We need a real big guy. And they, and they, and they go, Well, how big are you? And he goes, Well, right now I'm three. 340. Like I said, uh, when, he goes, uh, we're going to shoot um, next week. Can you come down? I go, dude, I go, by next week, I can be 360. <laughs> oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So I show up, and uh, I've never acted before in my life. Yeah. So I went in there, and I'm I'm different than everybody else. Oh, yeah. And um, they, I go, where's the teleprompters? Like, we, the set that you see when you watch yeah. that thing? I sit down, I'm looking for the screens, like... Where's it at? Yeah, and they yeah. Hand, they hand me the um, the script. Yeah. And I'm looking through it, and I see my little part there, but I'm like, well, they can't remember all this fucking shit. Yeah, like what? what like, the, yeah. the most impressive thing, and, and this is one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in my life, is acting. Because if you watch that, it's twenty some minutes straight shot, yeah, no cuts, no teleprompters. They just and all that it. stuff is memorized. Wow. These guys, paragraphs. Yeah. I can't remember two fucking sentences. Yeah. <laughs> These There's guys no way are remembering done paragraphs to the T. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting there. I missed my line the first the, we get one <laughs> take. And I'm sitting there watching it. And it's I, spaced and, out. And I, I just, I, where the fuck are you reading? Yeah. How are you doing this shit? You're How like, do, you memorize You guys got cue cards somewhere? Dude, like, yeah. And, I, and, I, and, I, and then my part came up and I'm just, I'm looking at it. I'm like, how the fuck are you guys remembering yeah. all this? And still to this day. I'm sure it's just like anything. I've mentioned a thousand. I'm sure you practice it and practice yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But they're walking around with their scripts and the most impressive thing I've seen. But anyway, I had one line. It was, I'm here too. But I brought a little bit more to the the character yeah. of the show. Uh, as I was called the strong man. I'm actually on the international movie database. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, it hey, popped strong up. strong man. And um, every time they would cut to me, I was doing the, you know. Yeah, the whole meme. Head, yeah, head yeah, little, and yeah. Puckering the lips and shit. <laughs> And, uh, you know, just little things I brought to the character. And, and I said my line, and, and um, it was, that was just, I, I didn't get paid for it. Yeah. It was supposed to go to the Cannes Film Festival, and if it got this or that or whatever happened to it, I would have got a grand. Yeah. It was just a it's great some, experience to yeah, get out there and see what acting was about. Yeah. And um, it's a pretty cool little skit we did. And, yeah. Um, um, it looks sick. It was enjoyable. It was fun. I got to bench press the, uh, the little brunette after we were done. Oh, yeah. Put her on a little piece of uh, a little uh, bench. I pressed her up like this, and they shot that and everything. So, <laughs> got to do some cool things while I was there. But yeah. yeah, I got some acting in. Yeah, that's badass. I almost had a part in Terminator Three too, by the way. Oh shit! Yeah. Uh, long How'd that come about? I'm yeah. Off on stories. Here. No, well, let's hear that. Let's hear that. Two thousand and three or two December. Well, I don't know what year it was. Gus Rutherich, the president of the Wild Bill Federation. I don't know if you know this, but Gus has been in some movies. Okay. He's been in Twins. He's been in House. He's been in uh, Scorpion King. Damn. Uh, what else has Got Gus been in? Got a rap sheet, yeah. He's been in some movies. Yeah. He's, he's been, uh, oh, he's Running Man. Oh, I okay. Saw. Yeah. Yeah, so Damn. he's, he's uh, he knows Schwarzenegger, and he knows yeah. his makeup guy, and he, his makeup guy at the time was uh, Jeff Don. Okay. And um, I was uh, three, I was, I, three, oh, I was 300 pounds, something benching. I was big raw bencher at the time. And Gus kept calling me. He goes, Ryan, you got to be ready to board a plane because they're filming the beginning of the movie, but they're at the end of the filming schedule, but they're filming the beginning, and there's a small part for you. You need to be get, get ready to get on a plane. I've talked to Jeff Don. You show up down there on the set, and you fucking bring in, you know, bench 500 pounds in front of him. Yeah. He goes, you'll get the part. Yeah. And I was like, I'll do it. I'll go in there. Yeah. yeah well, I never got the part, but yeah. it was cool. My name was being tossed around. Yeah. I guess the part would have been, of course, when... Arnold walks up to that script club, and there's that old man sitting there by the door. Oh, you know, okay, okay. With the door. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I overheard, you. too, that I was 315 pounds, and Schwarzenegger's not a big guy. And if you look at the part, Schwarzenegger obviously has to be bigger than, than that guy. guy. So yeah. So he chose an older dude. But yeah. I was really hoping uh, that would have been some I shit. Got in yeah, that would have been some sick. Acting. That'd have not been very good shit. at it, but hey. Yeah, it would have happened. Yeah. yeah. So you didn't mean to ramble on that story, but no, that's, that's good. got a lot of stories to tell. That's crazy. So since this is wasting weed, you got to give me a, a good stoner story. You got to give me a, a, you know, you got too high, too stoned, something, something yeah, crazy. No, uh, weed, you know, weed. Shit, when did we start? Uh, freshman in high school, first introduced to weed. Okay. And I remember, you know, at the time, you know, weed, weed is the worst thing. It's gonna, oh, man, it's they, gonna ruin your life. Yeah. You're gonna die. All this kind of yeah, negative and shit. Yeah, I got some weed and some tin foil from a friend of mine, and I didn't know, I, and I knew that you took a pop can. Yeah, did all, did all that. And I yeah. Remember, uh, I was I was probably May 90, 1989, and um, my parents had gone to a friend's house, and I was watching the NBA Finals, Lakers, and probably the Pistons or something like that. And I okay. remember I put a little bit on there, and I smoked it, and I took a few puffs, and I went and sat down, started watching TV, and I was like, 
this basketball is the greatest game ever. <laughs> You're like, I love this book. And then I went in the kitchen and I grabbed like a ice cream bar. Yeah. And then I went and got another ice cream bar. Uh, yep. And another one. The so, you know, is then it. I was like, okay, yeah. this is neat. I got it figured out. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, as time went on, you know, there was, um, um, there was two kinds of weed in my era. There was Red Bud. And there was green bud. Yeah. All this other fucking shit they have now is just yeah. space cadets. Yeah. Stuff. But you either got like the the Mexican red bud, you know, yeah. which is good. Yeah. Or you got the indoor green bud, which is the high quality yeah. stuff. It's a fire you paid shit. for it too. Yeah. So you pay you, you, are you got money or you got no money. And then uh, oh we, we tried to work out on it one time. Um, didn't have it lasted five <laughs> minutes. We got in there, we sat in the car and we were roasting one, my buddy and I, we went in and at the time I could bench three fifteen for ten reps. We went in, and our, both of our eyes are half closed, and we're just holding back. We can't yeah, stop laughing. Yeah. I put on a plate, and I'm clo- I had, my eyes are closed. And I'm like, God, this is fucking heavy, like a plate. And he puts on a plate, and he starts laughing, and I'm fucking laughing. He racks it. It's a rat. I put on two plates, and I, I remember looking up at him, and his eyes are closed, and he's, he's laughing. And I just, fuck it. You're like, it's a wrap. Yeah, we're done. Laughed. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> Oh, yeah. another weed story was uh, kind of a cool one. You know, uh, Mark Scott Emery, the Prince of Pop, yeah. Vancouver, British Columbia. You know, he was a uh, international uh, uh, ster- uh, uh, marijuana seed dealer. Yeah. And uh, he wasn't too far away. And I remember we took a trip to Canada one time because I wanted to meet the man. You know, yeah. the guy who's trying to legalize. And he's done a, a world of wonders for uh, marijuana time. legalization. Yeah, so much. What he's done. And it's, it's credited to him. And I wanted to meet the guy, you know. So yeah. we went up to Canada. And um, I, uh, I, I, I was, I, I had smoked some good weed here in yeah. Washington, and um, I figured I could handle what he could throw. Yeah, I could hang with him. And, yeah. Uh, no, I went and I sat down, and and uh, he's, uh, and I, I was like, Mark, I said, I, I was told that the most potent marijuana is the most pungent marijuana, mm-hmm. and he goes into great. He's like fucking scholar of literature, like oh, yeah, no, like, the, the most succulent marijuana. Starts talking Shakespeare. Very, very little, yeah. very little smell, and it's very unique. You know. What the fuck is this guy yeah. talking about? And he goes, this is Romulan. And he puts it in a pipe. And he goes, blows it like this and hands it to me. And, I, dude, uh, two poles on Fried. that stuff. And I just sat in the chair. Stuck. I think I sat there. Yeah. <laughs> and this is like a business chair. Like, yeah. you can get in a smoke with him. I didn't move for 30 minutes. Oh, you are stuck. And then I got in the car. And I remember trying to drive back to the hotel. Oh, oh my God! That's probably the longest trip to the hotel. Longest yeah, trip. <laughs> everything's like, so much slower. Yeah, everything's moving slow. Yeah, dude. yeah. He got me really high. So. Oh man, that's a good story. But, uh, no, I smoked some really good weed with Mark. That's and, a badass uh, story. I, 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 I idolized him a little bit for the for the, the for the movement that he yeah. created and what he did. Yeah, and I he, think there, there was such a, a weird stigma to weed, and I still think there is. That's why it's kind of like, man, it's it's not doing a whole lot of damage no. to people, you know. I'm glad on. to see it got legalized. I laughed. Yeah. I laughed so hard, like you know, in 2011 and 12, and Oregon and uh, all this, you know, this medicinal purposes. They're going to legalize it on a federal level here sooner or later. It's yeah, like, it's not a. It's yeah. not going to turn you into a psychopath yeah. killer or anything. Yeah, you'll destroy. Think, uh, you'll kill the fridge. The windows, thinking they yeah. can fly and shit. You'll end up killing the fridge. That's uh, about it. Most yeah, of the I mean, you're going to get fat from eating yeah. junk food. That yeah. is too funny, man. But no, that's, I don't have very, very many weed stories. I mean, yeah, no, that's a good one though. Yeah. That's, that's pretty Mark badass. Henry and uh, like I said, some people you know smoke weed and work out. I can't. I, do I don't it. know how they do it. Nope. And, uh, I tried it once and I say I had like scattered brain. I was looking everywhere. I was like, yeah, this well, is not. Stuff I was smoking was like a muscle relaxer. Yeah, like, so I it just put noodle. you down. Like, fuck, I, yeah. my muscles wouldn't even contract. It was like, fuck yeah. this shit. Yeah, yeah, I tried There's it no once way. and yeah, never again. But yeah. Yeah, I figured, and then uh, as time went on, you know, they said, well, if you smoke more than an ounce of marijuana a day, it can convert to estrogen, lower testosterone. And I was like, fuck, I need testosterone. Yeah, yeah I don't need that fucking meal. So I kind of <laughs> cut that back a little bit, yeah. and because um, I wanted, you know, I wanted, I didn't want to hinder anything. In my yeah, you want a maximum want results. So, yeah. yeah. So it was, uh, it was, uh, I tried it again, you know, when it came legal here in Washington State. I went to a few weed stores and checked it out. Checked it out a little bit, but my God, some of that stuff in there is so fucking potent. Yeah, it's crazy. It's unreal, man. Yeah. They're, they're crossing strains, doing these hybrids and shit that is unheard to, of now. To <laughs> shit to 99% yeah. purity. I mean, good. Hey, it's more a power to my, you. Uh, yeah. Like the weak shit we had the, yeah, back the, in the day. That, so the yeah. outdoor, it, yeah. yeah. No. And that's how I, I kind of found it, like, running trend, man. Like, I just couldn't sleep, sweat. And so I just was like, you know what? My buddy, he's heavy smoker. He rolled me a blunt. I was like, here you go. Try this. And it I you. went to sleep. And then I was like, oh, my God, this is the key. So then it was like that was what I started doing for bed. 
and then I started doing it more like recreational because I actually enjoy it. I never really was a smoker beforehand, right. so now I'm like, oh, this is cool. I, I'm tasting the flavor. I'm like more of a, a connoisseur now. You know, it's kind of weird. Well, I got something to tell you too. Is, and I always ask weed smokers this because I don't understand. But back in the day, I never once got paranoid smoking weed. All the weed we had back in the early yeah. '90s, no matter how much of it I smoked, I never got paranoid. This new stuff they have out now, man, I smoke it. I just start having like inner fucking tri- thoughts. Like tri- tri- yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I should have went to college. I should have. Yeah. I'm, I'm not very smart. I'm There's, all these fucking. And yeah. It, dude, it's not fun anymore. Like, yeah. It, Your like, high is gone. You're like, dude, bro. I'm like thinking like, oh my God, I'm, 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 I'm out of the nothing. And I yeah. should have <laughs> Oh, I didn't do that. Uh, it, it just, yeah. It's not fucking it, laid back weed anymore. Yeah. I don't know. My body's just this, like rejecting yeah. it. Or do I have to be in no. a, a club of people and just yeah. around? It, it depends. I think the some environment needs yeah. to be different. I think some of the getting high by yourself ain't working for yeah. me. Yeah, some of the strains that'll do that to you. Because my buddy, we we'll smoke together. We'll smoke like four or five of us, and he's the only one that gets like that. But then there's sometimes I smoke alone, and then I kind of I'm like, wait, what was? And then I start kind of like hearing things, and I'm like, wait a minute, man, I'm going yeah. inside. Like I'm cool. I want, so. the, I want that armchair we did. It's like yeah. it down like this. The, the couch sitter. Yeah, I don't want the fucking yeah. the spin going on. Yeah. Like so, fucking, yeah, like it's a, it's crazy. Elevated but, heart rate and shit. Yeah. And fuck, well, that's dude. what happened. So like you know, like your blood pressure is high. I'm on you know on trend. So yeah. I smoked the sativa, and then my anxiety is just. Oh. I my. hate that fucking word anxiety. Yeah. Man. Oh. That's something I was gonna ask you about, man. You're you're, uh, you kind of just. I hit a light bulb in my head. You're pretty aware when it comes to anxiety and stuff. You're all, you know, I've watched some of the Bench Monster TV. And you say, oh, this, you know, this gave me anxiety or oh, I was about to have a panic attack. Is that something you've always kind of dealt with, like, your whole life? Or you just kind of, like... Since I've gotten big. Yeah. Okay. Since I've gotten... I've never had... Um, and I still get, like, um, when I get into a, a car and close the door. Yeah, I get like a, I get, like, a panic attack. Like yeah, like, like what's going on? Yeah. yeah. I think it's from being big. See, my, my grandpa's six six four. Okay. And he has the same issue. He don't like being in tight spaces. Tight spaces. He's not. He freaks like out. Like in those bench press shirts when they got oh, my, my yeah. belt on and I'm locked in. Yeah. Like when I get when I do the lift and stand up, I want out of that. Yeah, get me out of the state quick. I yeah. To, yeah I just, um, and it never that never was a problem. Yeah. When I was lighter in body weight, I'm going to say. Now, I will get down lighter in body weight, but it just seems when I get big, it just, I get real claustrophobic yeah. and shit. That shit kind of spikes like up. Yeah, I was in the like, shower this morning, the shower curtain. I don't have one of those fancy ones that bend around yet. Okay. Just straight up it's, right right against you. Yeah. It was hitting my elbow, and I was like, fuck, is the shower getting smaller? Or am yeah, I getting bigger. Getting bigger. Fuck. <laughs> I was like, this, I'm like, okay, just it's, breathe. Yeah. Yeah, I know I know when those come on, I kind of know psychologically how to handle them. That's, Slow the breathing yeah. down, in through the nose, push the stomach out. You know, anytime, because yeah. what happens is the stomach tightens, and you start to uh, uh, lung breathe. Okay. Yeah. And so then it gets even worse. Just got to push the yeah. stomach out. Yeah, like, I got ways around them, but they're no fun, man. That's pretty cool, though, like like that you're aware. A lot of people don't even realize that they have, you know, panic attacks going on or some shit. That shit happened to me. We were playing at Hoop Fest a couple years ago, and we I was walking to the court, and I was worried about all the people around me. I said, like, man, there's so many fucking people here, so, you know? And then we played, and it was like, after we played, it felt like, fuck, someone was sitting on my chest. Really? And I couldn't catch my breath. I started coughing, and I was like, man, I got to sit down. My buddy goes, I think you just had a panic attack. And then I was like, there's no way, you know. So we kind of started walking, and I kind of started researching, like, what? And I was like, I, I did. Yeah. I was so worried about what was going on around me. And then we started playing. I didn't even think about it. It's just like things start spinning. Yeah. Your heart's going faster. And it's, it's they're scary. Yeah. I don't like them. I, I no. got Xanax for that now. Yeah. But, <laughs> That's uh, it. I'd be chilling, though. <laughs> and, I, and, you know, like I said, with the weed these days, the weed gives me, like, anxiety and panic yeah. attacks. So I take the yeah. weed and a Xanax now. Yeah. And then I'm, you're done. I'm yeah. good now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to figure it out. Yeah, I got to figure it out, so... All right. But it, it makes me really lazy though, and I, I like to yeah that slows my brain down and yeah. um, I'm always I'm always I'm always working man I'm yeah. always, I'm always got something spinning in my head some yeah. plan something to make my clients stronger I'm, I'm always constantly yeah. thinking it's, it's always, it's always going. going it's always yeah. going man and that's what keeps me going yeah. I think if that wasn't going I'd be slow down and go down yeah. and I'd be like the rest of the forty year old guys yeah. that I went to school with and fat yeah. and come on you know not like, doing shit nine to five and yeah barbecue on the weekends and hold a beer in one hand and talk about how good they used to yeah. be yeah used to Fuck be. that shit yeah because you still chase it you still want the world record Fuck, I'm yeah trying to, I, I, you know the the world record now on these band shirts oh, that are out there is Cole was, 20 yeah Cole yeah no I, that right. guy's made the bench man yeah, yeah he is just fucking built I mean he is uh, um there's 
no other on this He's earth a beast. right now that yeah. is going to get close to him. But yeah. you know, if I could, um, if I could get a couple thousands, maybe at eleven hundred. Yeah. And I say that now, but yeah. you know, of course, if I hit eleven hundred, and it'd be twelve. Myself, yeah. yeah so. <laughs> But I've been, um, I, I just um, been going through a, a hard time. I, I pinched a nerve in my C6 vertebrae in my neck Ooh. seven months ago. Yeah. Um, it happened either on a high bar squat one, one week or the next week we were floor pressing with slingshots on. And I brought out like 600 and came down and, and the something. slingshot buckled me Ooh. like this. Yeah. Okay. So and a week later we did huh. decline and I came in and I took four plates out and this right arm just fell down. And like, oh, what the shit. Fuck? And everything I bench, like I would try just, to do close grip 225, yeah. fall down. Just holding it. What the fuck? Yeah, That's dude, some shit. Went in for x ray, MRI, yeah. and they said I have stenosis and I got to have surgery. And I'm like, never had a surgery. I'm freaking out. Well, you got to go to physical therapy <laughs> first. So oh, I went there man. and did that bullshit. And I, I'm like, well, you got to do a cortisone first. We can't cut your neck open until we try this. So it's been seven months and I uh, just got a cortisone shot three week, three, two and a half weeks ago. And, um, I'm back to normal now. The yeah. arm's firing. That's been helping? But it's been, it's been clamped off, and it's actually atrophied for the past seven months. Oh. So I have to rebuild it. Yeah, so you've got yeah. to restructure that and yeah, then get pecs, it back to... The pecs kind of um, atrophied. This arm was an inch smaller. So I've uh, really stepped it up in the gym, doing more curls, more triceps. Accessories on that side. Almost every other day now, trying to get it back. Oh, uh, okay. Because that muscle memory, it'll come back. Yeah. It's been down for seven months. It ain't yeah. coming back in three weeks. Yeah, you got to... So I'm, i kind of been yeah. down and, and turning down meats and just having a interesting's almost been not fun yeah so i just been coach I've yeah been showing up and coaching my guys and it's the same song but, and dance for me every fucking yeah. week that i come in 325 is my one rep max raw that's all i yeah. can do um i know i know all i can do on this exercise i know all I, I was not making any progress yeah because of that nerve and now that i've gotten this cortisone shot it's opened up the doors again it's been so helping not sure how long it's gonna help yeah i'm just gonna ride the wave and enjoy it while i can yeah let's hope it Let's hope yeah. it lasts, man, because I want to see you back out there, man. I do, too, man. Yeah. That shit, not getting any younger. I don't yeah. have much time to sit on the sideline. I need to yeah. heal now. Yeah. I need to be strong tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> not today. So let's give me your uh, top three favorite benches of all time. Top three? Yeah, top three. Ken Lane, Anthony Clark, and uh, Jimmy Cole now. Okay. I like Jimmy Cole. Yeah, that's badass. The reason I like him is because he uh I, I used to know the guy who had the 242 and the 275 bench records his name was rob liondo phenomenal guy and i remember jimmy kolb came along and went, he showed up at the arnold and, and did like a um, 950 at 242 or something and Damn. i remember who the fuck is jimmy Cole? yeah who's that guy <laughs> okay and i'm like i think you know he's just maybe he's just a flash in the pan well, yeah he um disappeared I think, I think yeah. he went in the military. Yeah. Did his three or four oh, years or whatever. Okay. And he came back. And now then he, like, benched 1,000 and 1,100. And so he's, he's like my new kind of hero. He just, he's, the things he's able to do are just, are just unreal. Yeah. I mean, every every bench video is he's doing 1,200 pounds. crazy shit, man. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I mean, the most I've ever held and moved is 1,280. I did it to a four-board. Yeah. You know, and that was a long time ago. So he's got the bone structure. He just built the fucking yeah. bench. Yeah. He's massive. But when I was coming yeah. up, you know, I, I would open the pirate this magazine, Powerlifting USA, yeah. and there'd be an article in there for Enzer Advanced Designs, and his two sponsored athletes were Ken Lane and Anthony Clark. And I remember looking at their records in there: Ken Lane, seven fifty; Anthony Clark, seven seventy five. I like these are the guys who are number one. Yeah. These are the numbers I have to do. And I remember looking at them. I never doubted myself. I never thought of steroids. Yeah. I just knew it was humanly possible. Yeah. And I looked at Anthony Clark and I said, well. He, I like him, but he benches like this. Yeah. And I, I don't think that's going to be yeah. accepted in, 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 in the sport. Yeah. I don't think people are going to allow loud, that. I thought yeah. it was weird. But this Ken Lane guy who Ken was, Lane uh, was got a, salt and pepper hair, there's a black yeah. and white photo of him. He's got forearms. I go, who's this fucking yeah, guy? Yeah, Ken Lane. So I, I tried was, to track him yeah. down, and he was just one of the guys I, I was like, I wanted to be like, you know, Ken Lane. And um, he's still out there. I'm trying to get him on my show, actually. Oh, that'd be so, badass. That'd yeah. Be sick. So those, yeah, Ken Lane, those two, and then like Jimmy Cole has really impressed me. Yeah. With what he's done with 13, a 1,320 pound bench. I never thought a human being, yeah. regardless Cole's, of shirts and shit, Cole's crazy. the guy's holding it and moving yeah. it, and he's got a nice lockout, too. There's no, yeah. He hasn't and pushed thought, it up like right to here no, it's, and, and, get that, yeah. and get that handed to him. His yeah. fucking arm's straight out like this. Yeah. And I, I admire he's that. Legit. I admire he's legit. that. So. He's badass. Um, so where can people find you at, Ryan? <sighs> On social I mean, media. Uh, Shit, I, well, if I had a website, I'd tell you. You know, my email is benchmonstergmail.com. Okay. Very simple. I am the bench monster. So yes, sir. Uh, like I said, I, I, I got a website. I got I to gotta, I gotta reel that back in and do something with it. But, uh, you know, I train at a, a little 
uh, off the wall gym right now. Um, people always said, you know, hey, why don't you ever have your own gym? And um, that's kind of a funny story too, because you know I realized that um, if I had my own gym, I mean, who would be my clients and who would who would work out there? It'd be yeah. all my friends. Yeah. And they wouldn't want to pay any fucking. Yeah. Rent. And you still have rent. You still. Have yeah, rent. lights, so all I that. Yeah. The gym was not going to ever happen without yeah. allowing treadmills and old people, and <laughs> so I was like, you know, I just I just make do with what I got, and yeah, uh, you know, I live in Kenwick, Washington. You know, I don't know what uh, really brought me there. I've lived in Dallas, Texas for half a year. I lived in Florida for a year. I kind of bounced around a little bit. Okay. And um, I like the four seasons up here. I yeah. Do. And um, I don't know, just uh, I, got, I, I do a lot of fishing, you know, before yeah. any weightlifting. I do yeah. a lot of fishing. There's a lot of waterways around here, so I do that. But, uh, yeah, like I said, my email, you know, I, I give out my phone number, but God, I nah. don't like to text. What's your uh, Instagram? Oh, it's real, right, right now it's real Ryan Canelli uh, at, but, um, at whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, Instagram, yeah. I wanted to get the bench monster, but somebody's got it. And oh, they haven't man. And post on it in 10 years. That's bogus as hell. Yeah, <laughs> so we got the bench monster. That back, but, uh, no, I, I, uh, and, and I have my, my Facebook uh, one. The okay. problem is, you know, the Russians and they've made these alternate web um, Facebook accounts with me. Yeah. And the real one is me with the the blue shirt. Um, okay. Uh, but yeah, real Ryan Canelli. Um, I don't know what my Instagram or my Facebook one is. Is there a particular address? But so if you go to the main page, it's uh, it's me and my uh, mentor Louis Simmons. Okay. And I, I'm I, I'm in a picture with him. It's both okay. our heads together, and uh, I really idolize that picture because he was the man that changed my lifting forever, and he's the man that created the bench monster. Yeah. It would never have been me. If yeah. I never would have took that boat ride or that trip to Florida, I never would have met Louie, and I ne- probably would never have been who I am right now. So yeah. So it changed my life forever. That fork in the road, man. Was Looking what? back on it, I'm glad I took it. Yeah. I'm glad it happened for a reason. And, uh, um, yeah. So you'd say out of – like, because I know you train with Chris Duffin, Stan Afferding, so yeah. many people. Louie was, was the one that – most impactful, you'd say? Most impactful, yeah, because yeah. he changed my lifting. I I'd missed all my lifts, and he – I called him up and talked to him for three hours, and I wrote everything down that he said. Every little, uh, yeah. uh, you yeah. get slow, you'll be slow. Uh, all these little, and I quotation marked them yeah. and wrote everything down. That's badass, and I bought man. The, the, I bought the bands. I bought the chains, all the correct stuff. I had the boards, and I, I knew I had to put it all together and follow it. And like I said, I, I, I went from, uh, after talking to him, like I said, I had a 733 bench. I talked to him in um, October of 2001. I really, uh, I had the chains and the bands with that guy I met in Florida, and that, that took me, then it was like, what, four or five months of training got me to the Arnold, I did the 739, that's a six pound PR, and then a month later, uh, 764, a month later, 785, a month and a half later, 800. Damn, yeah. So the proof's in the pudding, yeah, that, that so training works, just, all training works. I'm yeah. not sitting here just tooting my own horn saying, yeah. West Side's the only way, I mean, 531, uh, Cube, all yeah. these bench programs out there work. You just yeah. have to follow them to a T and do them correctly. Do the right shit. Yeah. Because yeah. they, they will work for you. But um, You said uh, those guys weren't even phased when you, like, because you ran into them at a meet, didn't you? Like, Louis Simmons, Kenny Patterson and all yeah. them. And you said that you were, like, you threw 500 up, usually raw. 600. 600. Yeah, because what I've done is a, as an intimidation thing. And, and in any meet I go to, in the warm-up room, you got everybody there. Yeah. And there's only, usually yeah. only a bench or two to warm up on. So everybody's warming up, and we're all yeah. watching well, with me, I like to uh, I like to psychologically psych people out, and I and I had the ability to put six plates on the bar, which is five eighty five. I could yeah. put that up like one thirty five, like butter. So yeah. uh, every meet that I've been to, you know, um, besides this one where Louis Simmons and his people were, I would do that five eighty five, and it mentally destroyed everybody. Yeah, in the warm-up people were like, well, before they yeah, even yeah, the it's a wrap. So I uh, I remember at this meet, I was like, okay, West Side guys, they're all standing around, yeah. and I had put six fifteen on there. Okay, I took it out, and it boom like this, and they didn't even flinch. It, they like, didn't even phase it. All right. You're they like, didn't even yeah, yeah. So that, that didn't work. So yeah. those guys are mentally tough fucking oh, human yeah. beings. They're, and I realized that they, and they all did well, too, at the meet. They all did re- world records and phenomenal lifts. Yeah. And I knew there was magic in what they had, and I wanted a piece of it. And yeah. uh, I'm glad that Louis Simmons helped me out, and uh, I owe it all to him. That's badass, you know, man. My lifting got me so far, but his really took me to the next level. Yeah. I didn't know anything about speed training. I didn't know anything about physics. I didn't know anything about max yeah. effort. I didn't know anything. All this close grip stuff, you know, um, board, uh, board presses and on and All on, man. It just yeah. opened up a whole new, and it made training fun. Yeah. Because before that, it was so archaic and so boring. Yeah. Same shit. Every same day, shit. different now day. Was, yeah. Now I had a plan. I came in, I did this exercise, I changed this one, I changed it again, I changed the resistance on this one, Put I changed the, chains, the grip. Yeah, it changed the Man, it was yeah. boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And, um, you know, then later on in life, you know, I, I applied it to other people. I had a kid who came to me with a 520 raw bench and he wanted me to um 
help him do a raw meet in like six weeks or six months or something. And I took him from 520 to 600 raw, 275, and, and I think it was three months, honestly. Damn. Just doing, doing my methods. Uh, a high school football coach came to me one time, same concept, wanted to up his bench, train with me. Um, I maxed him out. He did 405. I took 50% of that, 45% of that. We did speed just... work. I never saw him on a max yeah. effort day. He never did max effort. All he did was speed benching for six to seven weeks. And uh, he came in on the eighth week, and we, we remaxed him out. He did 440 for double and 450 for single. Fuck twanged his pec on. Hey. So he put 50 pounds on his bench just yeah. doing speed work. Fuck so people man. think that speed isn't important. Speed's I mean, it, it crucial. Has, it has a phenomenal yeah. factor and, and impact in your lifting. Yeah, that's just and crucial. And it's fun. Yeah. I mean, some people don't do it. Hey, if you don't do it, it's no I think deal. speed work works. Yeah, it works it, for me. It's and crucial. It works for people that, that I, I train with. I mean, it's like Louis says, you know, take first and second gear out of your car. You know, you need that speed and explosive power to start exactly. with. Exactly. And you need to be explosive in all your lifts, no exactly. matter what you yeah. have in the bar. You don't just press against something. I always tell people it's like getting hit with a cattle prod. Yeah. As you're, as you're pressing, I take that cattle prod and zap your ass with it. That's how fucking yeah, that's you got to be violent when you push. The yeah, pop. You don't you'll yeah. just push. You got to yeah. be violent with weights. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, man. Um, man, I think we're going to get out of here, man. We're sure, done. Man, we're wrap it up. So I'm just getting warm. Oh, you're getting warm. Oh, you got some. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, shit. Well, this is weights and weeds, and if you're not getting lifted, you better be lifted. We out of here.